The other new thing inside of Edius 8.1 is what's called an OFX plugin bridge. You have to download it separately from the Grass Valley website and install it. The first version is what's called a public beta, which means it's working pretty well, but it'll get better. Uh, OFX is a particular type of plugin used by an awful lot of people, and now Edius will support those using this OFX bridge. So I've done that, I've installed it. If I go to my list of effects here, you can see that I've actually got several different things here, all of which say New Blue on them. And under New Blue Essentials, you have the OFX bridge. All the other New Blue stuff is trial versions of different New Blue effects. The OFX bridge is the thing that you're getting because you've got EDS8. The other stuff is all trial versions. But OFX bridge is the one that you're actually getting. Now the reason it says New Blue is because this thing was actually written by New Blue. Grass Valley went to them and said, can you write us an OFX plugin bridge? You do lots of plugins, you know a lot about it. Can you do it for us, please? They said, yes. Now to use the OFX bridge, you just take it, drag it and drop it onto the clip. It pops up as an effect in the information window, just like everything else. Double click on it and then you get into the bridge. And any OFX plugins that it actually works with, you'll see here. Now, as it comes out, there's actually very few plugins that it works with. It works with Sapphire, which is what I've put in here. I've only got the trial version of Sapphire. So I'm going to take one of those, like this one, double click on it, and it brings the interface up here in the bridge. You can now see I've got something going on on there. It says General Sapphire plugins over the top of it because I'm using the trial version. I haven't got the full version here. But then beyond that, I can do stuff. You know, I'm changing the length of the rays here, changing the color of the rays, moving the rays around. So what this particular thing does is take the brightness that's in the image and then produce some light rays from it. And then you can change all the parameters that people are used to using with all the Sapphire plugins. If I want to scrub through it, you might expect that you'd come down here and grab that. But as you can see, nothing's happening with that at the moment. So if I want to see what it's like at different parts of the image, I don't grab this thing. I just come to the timeline and scrub through along the timeline. And then you can see the results actually of the clip there. You can even play it whilst this thing is open. If I want to keyframe it, I'm going to come down here and tick Use Keyframes. Puts one in at the start with all the default parameters that you've got. And then you just move through the clip and you can do stuff like change the position and so on. This is the first version of the bridge, and in this version, basically, you can put keyframes on, you can delete keyframes, you can animate stuff, but there aren't controls for things like Bezier handles and more advanced keyframing inside of it. We don't know if that's going to come along in the future. Right now, this is how it works. As you can see, I've now keyframed that so that the beams are changing where they're coming from. Click on OK, and there we are. I've now got an effect. Try and play it back. And I'm using a very powerful computer here. My computer is a Skylake processor, the latest kind of processors, which have only just come out. So it's a very powerful machine. As you can see, it can't play it back. It's quite typical with plugins inside of Edius. The native Edius ones work really well. If you get any plugins, they don't tend to work nearly as well. It gives me access to effects that I don't have in Edius. So with these Sapphire ones, it's all particle stuff, stylizing, diffusing, edge corrections, all sorts of things that simply you can't do inside of Edius. You might notice I do have a, a category called Boris FX up the top here. I've got Boris Red installed on this computer, and I've got an OFX version of that, as well as the Edius version. If you've got Boris Red installed on your machine, don't use it through the bridge. It'll turn up because it's there, but actually what you need to do is use the standard Boris Red that pops up in Edius. It'll just work better than going through this thing. Now, OFX is a standard but it doesn't mean just because it's a standard that any OFX plugins will work in Edius. They don't. At the moment, we know the Sapphire ones are validated and working. We've been told that they're working with Boris to get Boris Continuum working inside of Edius, which will be great, but that should be in Boris Continuum 10, which hasn't come out yet. And we also know they've been talking to HitFilm FX. A HitFilm do a compositing program, and they also have a bunch of plugins, which do an awful lot of things, like these light rays that I've got for Sapphire, and they're going to work in Edius as well. How well they all work, we'll know once they actually come along. But it's nice to have the OFX bridge because it gives you a way of getting in other plugins and other effects into Edius that you couldn't otherwise do. We did have the After Effects plugin bridge in Edius 7. It was always a bit dodgy. 
never had an interface where you could actually get a proper thing like this which is exactly the sort of interface I'd see for these plugins in another program yeah it worked but it wasn't brilliant so the OFX bridge is a lot better how well it works in the long term we'll know as soon as we get more plugins that work with it as soon as we get some working we'll endeavor to do another video showing you what they can do and why you might want them and you'll find that not all the plugins work typically with EDIUS plugins to do with time like time warping and things like that don't tend to work in EDIUS there's something about the way plugins work in EDIUS where it can't do time effects and I say we'll let you know more as soon as we get a chance to try it out with other plugins like Boris and HitFilm but it's nice and it's something that you're going to get because you've got EDIUS 8 it's also free because you've got EDIUS 8 the other thing you get when you install the OFX bridge is it adds in new blue titler pro 2 to the options for your titlers so obviously here I've got quick titler which everyone's going to have I've got viz title because I actually own that and we've got a new one new blue titler pro 2 now I say new new blue titler pro came out a year or two ago they're actually onto new blue titler 4 at the moment and to be honest new blue titler 4 is actually quite a lot better than new blue titler pro 2 but because you've got the OFX bridge they're actually giving this to you as well they're giving you a year's use of it so you can use it for a year if you want to carry on using it after that then you've got to pay to upgrade but it isn't watermarked or a trial version like some of the other new blue effects that get installed when you put the bridge in it's a working version and it'll work for a year so what you do is you just fire it up it comes up with the interface which is fairly self-explanatory obviously you can see enter text there so I'm just going to click on that and actually type in some text I can change the look of it in the style tab, I can change the font up here, I can change the size either by choosing a size or just grabbing it and moving around. But mainly what I want to do is I want to do some animation with this. Again it's fairly straightforward. So on the object tab you have things for position and rotation and so on and effectively what you do is you click this little thing turn on keyframing and then change these parameters in pretty much the same way you would in the layouter. But actually a much easier way is just to go to the library and steal some kind of pre-made style. Now here you can see I've got various headings under the styles. I've got different styles for what the text is going to look like. And it's quite nice that as you just hover your mouse over any of these, the text in the window there changes to preview what it's actually going to look like. There's various styles. So I've got basic, cinematic, fun. And then get more will lead you onto the new blue site where you can pay to buy some more templates. Coming back to the titler itself, there's paragraph templates, project templates, and you can see some of these don't have anything in unless you've actually bought packs, but there are some templates here which you can just straight away use. So all I've got to do is click on one and then I'll get a good idea of what it's going to look like. So yeah, I like that. Double click on it, it loads up that instead. And then all you've got to do is come down here, find the text on screen, and then change that text to be whatever you want it to be. Then you go to File, and then Exit. And what happens is it then goes through, and then it makes up the title. So unlike something like Viz Title, New Blue Titler Pro 2 can't play things in real time. So if you've done some animation, it's got to make it up for you. And that's what it's doing right now. It's a bit like Title Motion Pro if you ever used that in the old days of EDS5. If you go to New Blue Titler Pro 4, then it's much more in real time. There's a lot less of this kind of thing. But this is what New Blue Titler Pro 2 does. And the reason they've given you two is that they're giving you something so you can play around with it, actually get to like it. And then if you really like it, you're going to go off and buy Titler Pro 4 instead. But if you don't want to buy the new one, you can actually use this for a year without paying anything. There you are. Up comes my title. Job done. One slightly peculiar thing about Titler Pro 2 compared to the other titlers is it doesn't put a title in the bin. I'm used to Quick Titler always making a file up in the bin which also goes onto the timeline. New Blue Titler doesn't do that, it's just something on the timeline. I can actually go into it and do a save as and give it a name and it'll actually make me a file on the hard drive but it doesn't do that as a default, it's just how it works. Now here you can see I've gone into the title, I chose not to save it and it's still doing this caching stuff. It gives you more options than Quick Titler if you've actually bought New Blue Titler Pro 4 or you've bought Viz Titler then obviously that's a much better option than using this.
Anyway, that's a quick run through of all the different features of EDIUS 8.1. It's just taking what was good in version 8 and making everything a bit better and adding some new features. There'll be more coming along. We've been told by Grass Valley that the next one will be probably end of January-ish. No idea what will be in it yet. It'll all be very interesting to find out. Now, if you've got any questions, of course, you can always email us, sales at dvc.uk.com or support at dvc.uk.com or visit the website www.dvc.uk.com or phone us in the UK 01273 205 700.